Hello everyone, this is Michelle Brantner, Superintendent of Schools at the Marcellus School District and I'm Tony Sinaccio, I'm the Business Administrator here at the School District. And we're actually here today to go over a presentation that we'll be giving for our upcoming capital project vote. That presentation is set to be delivered live on Monday, November 29th, so that's the Monday after Thanksgiving at 6.30 p.m. Uh, there will be a link that you can click on to go and um, tune in and watch that presentation and also send in questions. And of course, people are welcome to join us in the LGI, Large Group Instruction Room in the high school. But we thought we would also go through the presentation and post it for you in video format so that uh, anyone who is unable to be with us that evening would still get a chance to see that information as we lead up to the project. So here we go. We'll start first uh, with that question that we've heard a few times. Why another project? Sometimes um, people can develop, I think I said this in a previous video, uh, building project fatigue because we've certainly been doing projects here, uh, starting with Let's see, six years ago, we started a project on the high school renovation and feels like we've been doing projects ever since. That being said, it's important to time projects in a manner so that we're addressing some of those critical maintenance and upkeep items. Uh, this project you'll see when we get into the scope isn't terribly glamorous, at least the core of the project. And in order to identify what those needs are, we're using something called a building condition survey. It's a, it's a required survey of our facilities that's done every five years. And that helps us identify our most important priorities. Second, we need to do things in a manner that's respectful to our community and our taxpayers. Obviously, um, especially here in New York State, we definitely pay our fair share of taxes. And we want to make sure that we're able to provide the type of facilities that our students and staff deserve to have to live and work, uh, that things are not broken, they're in good working order, um, but and so that we can be proud of those things, but also do so in a way that uses sound fiscal planning. And there's, there's two things that we're trying to capitalize on that make a difference with the timing. First and foremost is a process called debt replacement. Uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail. And the second, we've recently received an influx of federal money related to COVID, and uh, we're able to capitalize on using some of that money in a manner that uh, we'll see, we'll reap the benefits for many years to come. So as I had said, we'll talk a little bit about what is debt replacement. So debt replacement is really a, a dynamic when a district has, as you know, a series of mortgages. And when one of those mortgages is paid off, there's actually some space in your budget. You know, obviously it was a project approved previously by the voters, which means there was an agreement to incur an increase in taxes to cover the cost of that mortgage. But when it's paid off, it relieves some space. And by us simply replacing that mortgage with another mortgage, it keeps things level and steady while still addressing some of those maintenance and upkeep needs that I talked about before. So what are the project components? Well, all three buildings have major sections of their roofs that need replacement. They're, they're the vintage from 99 or 2000. And we're talking about roughly 200,000 square feet. Any of you that have recently had to do roof work, you know that it is certainly a costly venture. Uh, but a necessary one in order to keep the envelope of the building sound. Second, uh, back when we were renovating the high school building, there was originally talk of putting a component in that project uh, that would deal with the roadways in front of the high school and hopefully doing something to provide a little bit more separation between parent traffic and bus traffic. And uh, when everything happened with the high school project and there was some repackaging done, that was a section of scope that was removed. And actually, I think it was a great move for us to make because now we've gotten five more years of use out of that area. 
but we are starting to see more and more significant degradation uh, of the asphalt and are definitely in need of a redesign up in that area for, I would say for two reasons. First and foremost, safety. If you end up dropping your children off or picking them up, you know it's a little bit chaotic uh, because parent traffic, kid traffic, and bus traffic are all mixed together, uh, which, which is not a great situation. The second, um, the second reason is just simply once you have once you have um, event spaces all located at one end of your building, like we do, we have an athletic facility, we have uh, obviously our auditorium and our gymnasium all on that end of the high school, we end up just running out of parking spaces and we're hoping to increase parking uh, at least a little bit down at that end of our facility so that uh, we don't end up having cars parked unsafely all over the lawn and the fire lanes, et cetera. So this, the, um, hopefully that will help us just with that particular area of scope. So those are two items that are under the not too glamorous, just repair and upkeep, but unfortunately not inexpensive. There, there's also uh, something that you use as a strategy when you're putting projects out, and you've probably all become accustomed to this by now, and that's putting some alternates uh, out along with whatever your base bid items are. And we've identified a few, one of which, well, actually probably two of which you've seen before. Why put alternates up? Well, first and foremost, it does allow the district to get some pricing on those items so that you know exactly, uh, at least on bid day, what, what the actual cost would be to do the work. That, that helps with planning, even if you're not able to capture the work in the current project. The second reason is that it, it protects your base project scope while still allowing you the opportunity to capture additional scope if your bidding climate is, is good, is favorable, and you end up with actually more room in your budget than you anticipated. Obviously, we use pretty conservative numbers when we put things together, and that means, at least it's our hope, that we're conservative enough that we could capture additional work. So having the alternates there allow us to just very easily do that, like picking from a menu. So those alternate items, there's two sets of windows that we were not able to capture in the project that we did a few years ago at DMS. Um, and those are the windows at the DMS auditorium and also the old gymnasium. So we're hoping to be able to capture that work in this project. Second, um, in the most recent project that we're doing, we actually had as an alternate renovations to the locker rooms that are located in the basement of DMS and they serve our middle school students. They are in desperate need of a renovation and we are hoping to get updated bid numbers and fingers crossed, we could even capture that work. The third piece is that we have been developing an agriculture program in the district. I hope you all got a chance to check out uh, our most recent video that shows a little bit more of the highlights of that program and the direction that we're hoping to take it. We've identified that grassy area behind the parking lot that sits directly across from the high school currently. And we're really hoping to put some incredible facilities up there. You, you can see in the video on that program that our teachers have been busy at work writing grants and receiving some grant proposals for equipment, but we really could use some facilities. So we are hoping to do the site work preparation at the very least put infrastructure in, rough in electrical for the facilities themselves, any plumbing that needs to be roughed in, so that eventually we can put a sugar shack, a sawmill, and a greenhouse on that location in an area that's accessible to the entire district. If you didn't get a chance to check out that video, please do so, so that you can learn a little bit more about that program. So I think um, Mr. Sinaccio is going to talk to us a little bit about um, capital project financing. So you, you'll uh, find in the project brochure, you should have received at your house, that the uh, total project cost is around $17.5 million. And so there, there are two ways that we're going to pay for uh, the, the cost of the project. 
First, as Mrs. Brantner mentioned, is the use of debt replacement. So we have about $10 million worth of debt that's coming off the books. These are mortgages, as she referred to earlier, uh, that it will, will uh, come due and be paid in full by 2024. And so uh, this project, the reason we're voting now is to time the, the design of the project, SED approval, and then construction, so that everything's done right at that moment. So we'd go out and borrow money at the same time the solar debt is paid off, and so hence the term debt replacement. So again, that's paying for about $10 million worth of the project. The other seven seven and a half million dollars is being paid for um, really in two parts. One is building aid, which New York State currently pays us about reimburses us about eighty percent uh, of the cost of the work, and then the other twenty percent would be covered through the use of capital reserves. So, uh, so the goal that we had started out with when we when we uh, first discussed this project was no additional local taxes for Marcellus residents, and we do anticipate that we'll be able to accomplish that through, again, use of debt replacement, uh, building aid from New York State, and use of capital reserves. So, and, and previously we talked a little bit more about debt replacement, and that's definitely something we've been using and talking about over the course of the past few years, so probably uh, many of you have heard us refer to the term. So, uh, as Mr. Sinaccio said, it's a little strange to think about the fact that we won't actually begin paying for this project until 2024, uh, which is three years out. Um, but that's how projects work. You, you start out with actually doing a design of a project in concept only until such time that you put the project out on the street, so to speak, and have your community consider and vote on the project. Only once that occurs can you actually start what, what we would call the deep design work so we're sort of at the beginning of a, a lengthy process. Uh, it starts with this public forum, which, as I said, will, will be happening live, if you will, uh, Monday, November 29th. And then the vote is actually the following week, December 7th. You should have uh, heard me mention that date at least a few times now and also um, have seen it in the brochure that hopefully you've already received at your home. Pro then, once the vote occurs, if the community is able to support this project, then project design actually takes place between January and August with a hope that state ed will be having it in their hands by the end of August and entering into their re review phase, September, October, November, December, hoping that within that four-month period, we would have um, an approval by the state education department. That's all, you know, a required part of this process for school districts. And then hoping to bid in January or February, which is an excellent time to bid. Uh, that's a time when usually contractors are not, um, they're just starting to think about their, their work and sort of filling up their calendars, if you will. So definitely a favorable time with construction not starting until June of 2023 and hopefully being completed um, by the following August. Uh, obviously, we put the disclaimer, this is subject to change based on any circumstances that may arise. You can see that there's components of this that are out of our control, most specifically the state ed review time. Uh, review times for projects can change dramatically. So we really are betting on the fact that things will stay about how they are right now. Uh, but that certainly could change and it, it could upset our timeline. That being said, we're hoping that this things will stay on track. So we're hoping that um, you can take a, a peek here at just some photos of some of the conditions. You can see areas where our roof is starting to degrade. Um, it's really hard to show what an old roof looks like. Um, but because you don't have the luxury of getting up there and checking it out yourself, we thought we'd at least give you a peek of some areas that are already pooling and cracking and degrading. Uh, the other piece is that our driveway conditions are definitely going downhill. And we hopefully you're getting a sense of some of the cracking and potholes. Obviously, we're trying to keep up with it because we don't want to cause damage to the many cars that visit our campus. 
Um, but what happens annually is that you cold patch and the cracks what, reform over the winter. They get larger, the cold patch crumbles, and you're left with a bigger pothole than you had the year before. And so um, probably after three more years of that, uh, we will be even more in desperate need of having this work completed. And then also, um, just to give you a peek at the locker rooms that are in the basement, uh, if you can't tell, they're, they have definitely served their purpose. They're original to the building and really could use um, some touches in the very, very near future. So in terms of, um, I've had a couple questions actually uh, when we've had community members come into the district either for testing or uh, recent vaccination clinics. And someone asked me an interesting question. They said, what happens if the project vote is not favorable? And I thought, you know, that's an interesting one. Everyone knows what happens if the vote is yes. But if the vote were to go down, there's a variety of things that can happen. So obviously the project will not proceed on the timeline that, that we've been given. But I would say um, the district administration and the Board of Education would have an obligation to find a way to either repackage the project or put the project back out as is, um, simply because the core items, the roofs and the, the repaving, are pretty critical items just for upkeep of facility. So unfortunately, those are problems that will grow. They won't get smaller. And when problems grow, that means they can become more expensive. So I would say that we would have discussions uh, with our board and we would talk about a strat strategy of putting this project back out for the community, hopefully in a way that will be a bit more palatable. Um, obviously, capital reserve funds will sit waiting for a project. That's their intended use when the capital reserve was established. Uh, that's what it's there for. It's there to help with the local share. Um, of capital projects. And then the debt that we mentioned before will be paid off. There won't be a replacement, which will re result in a decrease in our mortgage payments for a period of time until such time that we're able to get a project approved and move forward. So hopefully that gives you an understanding of what happens if there's a favorable outcome and a not favorable outcome. So first and foremost, I guess, I hope we see you. On December 7th, you can come to vote anywhere between noon and nine uh, in our auditorium. And most of you that come and vote know exactly where that is and how it works. If you need an absentee ballot, please call us at 673-6000 and we will do our best to get one in your hands. And in order to vote, you need to be 18 years old and you have to have resided in the district for at least 30 days prior to December 7th. So we thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully that gave you some great information and you won't feel like you're missing anything if you're unable to join us on um, the 29th. Thanks and have a good day. Thank you.